How to set up and fund Solana wallet for Solana development. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. Welcome back to the channel. This will be a relatively short video where we'll cover how you can set up a Solana wallet for development as this is the most important step that you need to know if you want to do some Solana development. Okay, so let's see what we'll cover in this video. We'll start off by setting up a command line wallet. For that, we'll use the Solana command line tools. Then we'll set up Phantom wallet which is browser-based wallet. Then we'll learn how to transfer funds between the two wallets that we set up. That is the command line wallet and phantom wallet. And then we'll see how to actually fund your wallets. We'll do everything on DevNet, so it'll be all free. So let's start by setting up our command line wallet. And before we set up our command line wallet, let's just talk about it. This wallet is basically stored as a file on a computer. It is very insecure because it's unencrypted and if you open the file you'll actually see it's just a bunch of numbers because it's a file anybody can steal it and they can actually import it and start using it okay so let's see how we can set this up so step one is to install the solana command line tools you can find how to do that in the documentation for solana this should be a pretty straightforward process then We'll create our wallet for that we can execute this command where we specify the file path where we want our wallet to exist and then we can actually use this command to look at the public key of the generated wallet okay so the first step is to install the solana cli here's the documentation which you can refer to to install the cli you can see it just tells you to run this command at least on mac and linux to install the cli after installation, you can verify that your installation was successful by running this command down here, which is Solana version. I already have the CLI installed. Let's verify that it's working using the Solana version command. Okay, so that's Solana and version. Perfect. Now the next step is to actually create a wallet. So to create our wallet, we'll run the command Solana keygen new out file and then we have to give a path uh, where our wallet will be generated so i'll use my current directory and give it a file name um let's say test.json okay now it's asking for a passphrase we don't have to give anything here we can skip it and that's it it generated our wallet we can see that it says that it wrote a new key pair to the current directory test.json and this is the public key for it well let's run another command and use this file to showcase that this is actually the public key for that file to do that we can run this command solana keygen pubkey and give it the file which is test.json Oops, I didn't notice the typo. Let me fix that. Now we can see that the public key that we just got for this test.json file matches what we got when we created the wallet. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now let's set up Phantom Wallet. This is the most easiest wallet to set up and most of you might already have done this in the past. This wallet is installed in the browser and there are several such wallets. I'm just using Phantom as an example here. So step one will be to install the wallet in the browser that you're using. When you set up your wallet, you'll have to give it a password and a seed phrase. Make sure you keep them secure. If anybody gets their hand on seed phrase or if you lose it, then you cannot recover your accounts. Okay, after the setup, all we have to do is use the user interface to create new wallets. Okay, so the first step is to actually install Phantom in your browser. I'll be using Brave Browser. So here I'm on the phantom.app website. And next I can go to download, click on Brave, that's my browser. And I hit add to Brave. Okay, add extension. Perfect. After installation, we see the screen. Now I don't have a wallet already, but if you had one, you could import it here. But we'll start by creating a new wallet. Step one is to give it a password. I'll just use my favorite password here. 
Okay, agreeing to the terms of service that we never read and hitting continue. So in addition to the password that we entered previously, which just unlocks your wallet, we see the secret recovery phrase here. This is a very essential part of your wallet. If you lose this, or if somebody else steals it, we cannot recover your account. So make sure you save this somewhere safely. And if you're wondering why I'm showing the secret recovery phrase in a video, I'm not going to use this wallet and it's just for demonstration purpose only. Okay, once you have saved it, hit continue. And keep going through it and we're done. Let's look at our wallet now. It's hidden up here. I'll pin it for ease of access. And here's our wallet. So by default, when you set up Phantom, it comes with one default wallet here that you can see. And by default, it uses mainnet as the network, which we can see right here in the network settings. It's using mainnet here. I'm going to set it to devnet because we're going to do everything on devnet as it's free and it's meant for development purpose. And before we continue further, let's see how to add a new wallet here. You can just click add. If you don't have any private key or a hardware wallet, just click on create a new wallet. And there you go. We have wallet two now. Okay, now we have one wallet that's in our file system. And then we have another wallet that's in our browser. What if we had to use them interchangeably? Like I always prefer if I can see my command line wallet in my browser. Or rather if you have a phantom wallet setup and you want to use it in a command line wallet for development, then how do you do that? It's a pretty straightforward process. All you need to do is get the private key for whatever wallet you want to import and then just import the private key and you're done. So let's see how we can import our command line wallet into phantom. So let's go back to our terminal. Let's look at the directory where we had our wallet created. We see we have test.json file. Let's look at the contents of it. I don't think we have done that yet. And we can see it's just a bunch of numbers. So to import this into phantom, let's copy all of this. Make sure you don't copy this person sign in the end. I don't think we need that. So let's go back to our browser, then to phantom. Let's get rid of this banner there. And let's do add connect wallet. And now we have a private key basically. So we click on input private key, paste whatever we copied earlier and give it a name. Let's name it test and hit import. Now here we can see our public key ends in 48Q4. Let's see if it matches what we saw in in the terminal, which is 48Q4. Okay, well, that was easy. We just imported our command line wallet into Phantom. What if we had to do it the other way around? If we had to import a wallet from Phantom into a file? Let's see. Okay, so let's try to export the private key for this wallet here so that we can input this into our command line wallet. So to do that, go to our settings here then we scroll all the way down we click on export private key then we give it our password again and then we see the private key here and this private key looks very different than what we have seen uh, from the wallets that we created in our command line so let's take a look at the wallet that we had in in our command line so we'll do a cat on test.json and we can see it's comma separated values with some numbers there and this is a string so this is actually a base 58 representation of this um, string here and as you work through solana development you know that everything is basically a base 58 string i wrote a small script that can convert the string into the comma separated values here i'll post a link to my code snippet in the description of the video so let's quickly take a look at the script that we have for that. I'll use cat to print out the script. It's a fairly simple script. We import two libraries, base58 and sys. And we basically base58 decode whatever input, input we pass to the script. And then we just create a comma separated values um, inside, inside square brackets. And then we print out this, print out the string. 
So I took this script from the Stack Overflow answer. It's always good to give credits wherever you take the code from. It's, it's the fair thing to do and it's a good reference back in case things don't work well. So I just modified this script here where it asked for the private key. I updated this so that we can provide this as an input parameter. Uh, but there are more answers here which you can look into. It, it looks like you can use the Solana CLI itself to recover the, the private keys from the wallet. But I didn't want to do that because uh, I found this more convenient. But totally, this is an answer that you can explore if, you're, if you don't want to deal with scripts. Okay, so going back to what we were doing. Let's export the private key string that we saw here. We'll use for, we'll use wallet one for that. So going back to settings, export private key, putting our password again, and copying the string. Now let's run the script here. So we'll use Python three and the script name and the private key from Phantom Wallet. And when we hit enter, we see it's just a bunch of numbers that we were expecting. So let's create a file here with the with these at, as the content. So let's just create, let's say, phantom.json file, and I'll put the value in. Okay, let's save this. So technically, that's all you had to do to create your wallet. But to verify things, let's see what the public key is for this phantom.json. If you remember, to do that, Solana CLI gives us a command for that, which is Solana keygen pubkey and the path of the file. In this case, that's phantom.json. And let's match the last four characters of the public key, which is YHTE, which we see matches phantom right here. So I guess we successfully exported our wallet from phantom and created a file in our file system. And we can use this with our command line tools. Okay, now that we know how to set up our wallets and how to move it back and forth between a file and in the browser, let's see how we can actually fund these to make them useful. So there are two ways to fund the wallet. The first way is to airdrop Solana to yourself using the Solana command line tools. And this is the command that you run. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you airdrop a lot of Solana. In my experience, I've done at most do Solana in one go. And sometimes it just doesn't work at all. And that's where the second step comes in. There's this website called Soul Faucet, which you can use to fund your wallets. Again, you can't put any arbitrary amount like 1000 Solana, but this is my backup whenever the airdrop option doesn't work for me using the command line tools. Oh, and before I forget, all of these airdrops will be done on DevNet, so it's basically free. So when you're doing Solana development, you don't have to really spend any real money and you can experiment as much as you want. Okay, that's great. Now we have wallets created both in Phantom and in the command line tools, but they don't have any funds. So we can't really do anything with these wallets. So let's add some funds into, into these wallets using the DevNet network. So before we do that, let's make sure we are in DevNet in our Solana CLI. So let's take a look at our Solana CLI configuration. For that, we can write Solana config git. And you can ignore everything you see here except the RPC URL. I've been using Metaplex a lot, so you'll see a Metaplex URL here. But the key point is definite here. This RPC URL needs to be definite. Okay, so this looks good. Now you can use the Solana CLI to airdrop Sol to yourself. So let's give that a shot. So to do that, you can do Solana airdrop, um, let's say one soul, and we need the public key of the wallet. Conveniently, we have it in our fandom. So let's grab any public key. Let's use this first wallet here. I'll click and copy the public key, go back to the terminal and paste it in here. And we can hit enter, it's requesting an airdrop. And it failed for us. And this happens frequently for me. And that's where the Soul Faucet website really comes in handy. So let's take a look at that. 
Okay, so this is the Soul Faucet website. Here we can enter our public key, how much soul we want, and choose in it what we are on. So going back to our Phantom Wallet, let's copy this public key, paste it in here, and request an airdrop for one soul. Oh, and before we continue, let's make sure we actually have zero souls in the account. So we have no soul in here, it's zero. And now let's request some airdrop from the faucet. Okay, usually it's pretty fast. Let's look at our balance again. And here we go. We have one soul in here. We can try it for another wallet, which is a test wallet. This is the wallet that we created using Solana CLI. So let's try to fund this wallet as well. We have zero soul in here. Going back to the soul faucet, replacing this public key with the new public key that we copied. And let's hit definite again to get an airdrop of one soul. Okay, let's see. Perfect, now we have one soul in here. So we can actually use the Solana CLI to check the balance as well. Let's do that. So I'll copy the public key again. I'll go to the terminal and here you can write Solana balance and the public key that we just copied. And if I hit enter, we can see it's one soul. So this is another way you can check your balance for any public key that you have. Okay, that was it for this video. This was a short video, but I think it was very important to cover this because if you don't know how to set up your Solana wallet for development, then you can't really make any progress. I hope you liked this video. As usual, please like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter and keep an eye out for my next video. Thanks everyone.